When I was in eighth grade, I sent my mother to jail. She'd been drinking, and we'd gotten in a fight, and I remember I hung up the first time I called because I was scared. But I did call back, and shortly thereafter, two officers arrived at my house. The first officer took me aside, recorded my testimony, and took photos of the marks on my arms and legs. And then the other officer put my mother in handcuffs. And I remember I caught a glimpse of my mother's face right before she was put in the back of the cop car. And what I saw wasn't a look of anger or sadness. It was just this look of pure hopelessness. And I knew this look well because I felt the same way. Now, after this night, my little brother and I were placed into foster care, and my mother was sent to rehab. And since then, none of us have lived together in the same home. Now, according to the Webster Dictionary, a family is defined as a group consisting of parents and children living together in the same house. And also according to this definition, I haven't had a family since the night that I made that phone call. And when I was in eighth grade, this word meant everything to me. I truly believed that I'd lost this sense of family, and I was really struggling to figure out what it was that I had left. And I maintained this toxic mindset for a very long time. And when my brother was, I maintained it actually until my brother was adopted by a family with 16 children when I was a sophomore, my sophomore year of college. And it wasn't the adoption that set me off. It was the fact that I'd never even considered my brother gaining additional siblings, and 16 siblings at that. I mean, there would be times whenever I'd call him to see how he'd been doing, and he would just tell me these stories of things that his sister had done, and it would absolutely break my heart because I knew he wasn't talking about me. I didn't know where it was that I fit in anymore, because if we didn't fit this definition of family before, we most definitely didn't fit it now. And what I realized is that if I was going to make it through this, then I had to change not only the way I viewed the situation, but I needed to change the way I viewed this word family. But it's so much easier to talk about change than it is to actually do it. And this, I, this moment of uncertainty is something that I feel like we can all identify with. That point in your life when everything that you feel like you know is thrown into question, and all you're left with is this decision to make. Are you going to continue along the same path, living this life with this belief that you have no other option but to accept what you've been given? Or are you going to take that risk and completely change your outlook? And this is a huge decision to make. And I don't think we take it seriously enough. It's far too easy for us to stick to the comfort of what's familiar. We're so scared of change that we just bury these feelings of uncertainty and just convince ourselves that eventually all that doubt is just going to go away. But it never does. Because that voice inside your head, it knows you better than you think. And when you fail to listen to it, the only person you cheat is yourself. So this is what I realized. I realized that it was time for me to change. And that maybe it was my unfaltering belief in this idea of family that was making everything so hard for me. So I did what any sane and, I guess, rational 19-year-old would do. And I decided to buy a plane ticket to Africa. <laughs> And the plan was for me to spend my winter break in Arusha, Tanzania, where I would be uh, volunteering at a local orphanage, and I would live with a local family. And I decided to go to Tanzania because it's a country I know nothing about. I don't know the people, the culture, the language. Everything was new to me. And what this meant is that I could go into this environment with no pre-established expectations of what it was I was getting into, that I was here for this pure intent to learn. And this all made perfect sense to me. Um, it seemed like, the, honestly, the best idea I'd ever had. I mean, this 19-year-old experiencing this early midlife crisis, flying by herself to a country she'd never heard of, to live with some random family she'd never met. And, I mean, honestly, if they are thinking about making a Taken 3, I feel like this would be the perfect, <laughs> the perfect storyline. But I did it, and as ridiculous and scary as it was, it ended up being the best thing I could have done. Because what I experienced in Africa truly changed everything. I saw family in a room full of orphans, and I felt home in a place with no running water or electricity. And when Christmas came around, I decorated the most Charlie Brown of Christmas trees ever, which was honestly just a branch, with strings of chili pepper lights and balloons. Everything was so untraditional, but it still felt more real to me than anything I'd experienced. I didn't need to know about the Tanzanian people or the culture or the language in order to feel the love and that sense of connectedness that just radiated from all the, the natives. And what I realized is that 
it didn't really matter that I was, what I was going through anymore. That this idea of family, this isn't what it meant to me. For me, family was love and happiness. And this means that I didn't need to have this group consisting of parents and children living together in the same household to have that. And this new definition of what I saw family as was broad enough to include anybody that brought me love and happiness. So Mama Zabeda and the three little girls that I lived with in Africa, they were my family too. And what this made me realize is that, you know, a word is honestly only what it means to you. That these definitions mean nothing more than that. So when my brother was adopted, this is what I decided. And it was, it was really, really crazy to me that I had maintained this, this image of what it means to be family for so long. And now I've continued to travel over my winter breaks, and every Christmas I give myself this gift of a growing family. And this past December, I went to Nepal, where um, I gained quite a few new additions. So from left to right, you're left to right, we have Kosimaya, Kusum, Sumbu, Pratap at the bottom, and then Mama, Tika, and Big Brother. And I spent five weeks with this family, and it was incredible. And in the same way that Africa helped me figure out what it is that family meant to me, Nepal had something new to teach me as well. I spent a lot of time reflecting on my adversity while I was in Nepal. I thought about the difficulties of living with six different families throughout high school. And I thought about the misfortune of still not having this stable home life. But then I thought about how grateful I am to have experienced these things. I thought about that sense of hopelessness that I had so long ago and how it no longer exists. Because this definition of adversity is nothing to me because it's not what I feel. It's my adversity that has made me a, it's made me a fighter. And it's my adversity that has led me to discover the power of my true potential. And once I realized that this word, this is what it meant to me, I really wanted to test it out by figuring out if this really was what I was made of. So what better way to test it out than to climb to the base of the top of the world? So when I made it to Mount Everest Base Camp, my life of misfortune and difficulties no longer existed because it didn't matter there. Because when you take the time to figure out what it is that a word means to you, you'll be amazed at what it is you can accomplish. Thank you.